Hey everyone, this is Jace with Elevate Strategies here to help you conquer the NPTE. Today we're going to do a practice question. This is going to be part of our metabolic and endocrine systems question. And we're going to talk about a situation and our response to it. And that would fall under the intervention category as well. We're going to define hypo and hyperglycemia first and then review the different signs and symptoms between hypoglycemic attack and hyperglycemic attack. And we'll then talk about what do you do if these attacks were to happen on the test or in the clinic. Let's first define hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. So when we think about diabetes, we're usually concerned about the level of glucose in the blood, right? So if we look at these two words and we break them apart, we know what hypo is and we know what hyper is, right? Too low or too high respectively. Glyce usually refers to glucose and the word emia literally means in the blood. Like another example of this is the word hypoxemia, right? Too little oxygen in the blood. So anytime you see the word emia, that's a giveaway that they're talking about something about the blood. So that actually could help you with other things on the NPTE as well. So anyways, if we put it together, hypoglycemia, too little blood glucose, hyperglycemia, too much blood glucose. So let's use those definitions to our advantage as much as possible. So how do we even get glucose? Well, we eat a meal, right? So let's say we eat a big juicy hamburger and that's gonna go through our stomach, through the digestive process. Eventually it will release glucose into our bloodstream. And then our body will take that glucose and usually store it in our cells for us until we're ready to use it. So have you ever had a day where you went and you didn't eat all day long or for like a long period of time? How did you feel? Think about that for a second. My guess is you probably felt hungry. You may have felt a little shaky. You may have felt even faint sort of feeling like dizzy faint. And you probably didn't have a ton of energy, did you? Well, that's the first four symptoms that we can think about for a hypoglycemic attack hypoglycemia, too little sugar or energy in the blood. And so you're going to have excessive hunger, which is also known as polyphagia, shakiness, dizziness, and lethargy. So if we keep to that theme of low energy and low blood sugar, most of these other signs and symptoms make sense in context with that, right? Pallor, so the person is gonna be pale, excessive sweating, now they may have this excessive sweating because it's an abnormal sympathetic response. So the body's gonna try to compensate. It's gonna kick in that fight or flight mode because you don't have enough energy. It's gotta do something. Weakness, um, you're gonna feel weak because you don't have any energy. Tachycardia, same thing. The heart is working overtime as a way to compensate for the lack of energy. And this is also part of that abnormal sympathetic response. Feeling faint, we talked about or syncope, so the person might feel so dizzy that they actually faint. And poor coordination and unsteady gait, with a significant lack of energy and blood glucose, you could actually end up with an ataxia type of gait or type of situation. And that's usually indicating to us that we are really far down in the hypoglycemic um, index where our blood sugar is really, really low. So that's not a good sign or symptom. Now for hyperglycemia, unfortunately, it's a little different and it's not quite as intuitive, but we still have a couple tricks we can use. So the first one is that if you know what hypoglycemia is, hyperglycemia doesn't really look like that. So if it's looking like hypoglycemia, then it's probably hypo. And if it's not looking like hypoglycemia, maybe it's hyperglycemia. The second trick is using our polys, okay? So we've got three polys, polyphagia, polydipsia, and polyuria. And those are going to usually occur together. And if you see the polys, we're thinking hyperglycemia. That's a big giveaway. Polyphagia is excessive hunger, polydipsia is excessive thirst, and polyuria is excessive urination. Now we did see polyphagia for hypoglycemia, because if you think about in hypoglycemia, not enough blood sugar, so you're probably hungry, like you don't have enough energy or enough food, um, and that makes sense. But 
with the hyperglycemia, the polydipsia and the polyuria are actually signs of dehydration, which is a big giveaway for hyperglycemia as well. And if we continue to use dehydration as the key point in our head, a couple other signs and symptoms do fall along those lines as well, like do make sense. Um, a flushed face, mental confusion, a rapid weak pulse, all three of those are also signs of dehydration and hyperglycemic attack. So then we've got these two random signs and symptoms, diminished reflexes and paresthesias that are also a part of our hyperglycemic attack. But those can, we can still use to our advantage, right? First of all, they don't look anything like hypoglycemia. So if you see these out, out of space type of uh, answers, probably not hypoglycemia. Uh, second, if you see those two and they are so weird, you know it could be hyperglycemia. Okay, so let's put these into practice with our question here. A diabetic patient is performing exercise warm up on an upper arm bike. Seven minutes into his warm up, the patient says he's very thirsty. He's also beginning to show a flushed face, polyphagia, and he has a weak pulse. The therapist also finds he has diminished deep tendon reflexes. The best next step is to A, call emergency medical services because the patient is having a hyperglycemic attack. B, call emergency medical services because the patient is having a hypoglycemic attack. C, help the patient with an insulin injection because the patient is having a hyperglycemic attack. D, provide orange juice to the patient because the patient is having a hypoglycemic attack. Okay, so we need to figure out what we're going to do next, right? We need the next step as per our question. So looking at our question, let's pull out the signs and symptoms that we're given. We're thirsty, we have a flushed face, we have polyphagia, and we have a weak pulse. Okay, so we see that our patient is diabetic, so we need to be thinking along those lines, and we already are, because in this video we talked a lot about the diabetes, hyper, and hypoglycemia, but usually the problem in physical therapy related to diabetic patients is things like peripheral neuropathy, patient education on foot care, and then watching out for the hypo and hyperglycemic attacks. So the question tells us nothing about balance, neuropathy, or foot care. So we're thinking the patient is having an attack. Okay, we know that because our answers say attack. So the signs and symptoms that we see in the question are signs of dehydration, thirsty, flushed face, and weak pulse. And we said that that was more aligned with our hyperglycemic attack. So if we use that rationale, we can already eliminate two answers, right? So now that we know we're having a hyperglycemic attack, what do we do? How do we react as therapists? Well, for hyperglycemia, the treatment is out of our scope, okay? Especially on the NPTE. You call emergency medical services. That's what you do. You cannot administer an injection. You cannot administer medicine. And that patient, we've got to get her, their blood glucose down. So you need to be calling EMS. That's pretty nice. It's pretty straightforward. Basically on the NPTE, if we have a hyperglycemic patient, you call emergency medical services. But let's go ahead and quickly discuss hypoglycemia as well, because we could encounter that on the test too. So what if we had a hypoglycemic person? What would we do then in terms of our intervention? Well, usually that person is still awake and oriented, even if they're faint or feeling dizzy. So you can give them something in this case. You can give them orange juice, you can give them a granola bar, anything that's gonna give them fast acting glucose or sugar. You just gotta get their blood sugar up a little bit. So that's within our scope. That's not medicine that we're giving out. We're not breaking any rules. So you can absolutely do that. Okay, but what if our patient Things, right? Like syncope was one of the things that could happen. What then? What we really need to be aware of is the patient non-responsive, because if they're non-responsive, then you need to call emergency medical services. At that point, it is now out of your scope of practice. You can't force feed them something while they're non-responsive, so you're calling EMS. Um, if they're fainting, that's still probably outside of our scope, Usually on the test, I don't see such a gray area. Either they're non-responsive, they fainted, or we got hyperglycemia. 
And those are the two situations that we call EMS. Um, but just make sure you're reading the question and all the information with it. Okay, so back to our question. Yes, our answer is gonna be A, which we basically already said, but I did wanna go over what would you do for both hyper attack and hypo attacks? Cause you could see both on the test. All right, well, that's it for today. Hopefully that gave you a little insight on how to handle hypo and hyperglycemic attacks. If you have any questions, just shoot us an email. It's gonna be down below in the box. You can also check out our website if you want some more practice questions and tips and tricks. Happy studying. See you next time.